Welcome everyone, in this video we will analyze a spring mass system. However, there is a little difference than usual. We will be analyzing this system using Hamiltonian mechanics. You heard it right, not Newtonian, we won't be focusing on forces, but rather we will focus on the total energy and use the Hamiltonian to figure out the motion equations. Now, how do we start? Well, maybe even I changed my mind. Let's first real quick start with the Newtonian and just refresh our memories on what the correct equation is. And then let's see we can, whether or not we can arrive at that equation using Hamiltonian. So Newtonian would say that the net force is equal to Na. So net force is the spring force in this case. This is an ideal Hookian spring which is going to be then negative kx by Hooke's law. This is equal to ma, and we can write this as, since a is the second time derivative of position, it is simply x double dot. This means the second time derivative of position. So the fourth equation is, the motion equation, let's say, is this. This is what uh, Newton tells us. This is uh, Newton. Newtonian, let's say. Now, how do we achieve the same goal using Hamiltonian? So I say Hamiltonian. Well, we first need to remember that the Hamiltonian is defined as the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. What is the kinetic energy? It is simply 1 over 2 mv squared. V here is the speed of the mass. Plus, since this is a Hookian spring, the potential energy will be 1 over 2 kx squared, where x is the displacement from the equilibrium position. So it is how far, uh, how much the uh, spring has been stretched or compressed from its natural length. That is what x means here. We know this, and we also know, and I mean, you perhaps don't know, but Hamiltonian focuses on momentum and position. It doesn't really focus on velocity. So why don't we just get rid of this velocity? For that, I would say p is equal to m times v, so v is equal to p over m, which I substitute here, so I get that 1 over 2 m, v squared is going to be p squared over m squared plus 1 over 2 kx squared. So the final expression that we are looking for, which is about to come, is p squared over 2m plus 1 over 2 kx squared. Cool. Now we will be using the Hamiltonian equations. I don't know what their names are exactly. I guess they are called Hamiltonian equations. Yeah. Hamilton's motion equations, whatever you call it, whatever you call them. So the first one is in the most general form, <laughs> not the most general, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to lie, okay? So it is going to be the, the generalized velocity, the q dot, is equal to the partial derivative of Hamiltonian with respect to the generalized momentum. And you can even put little i's here to indicate that this is the most general case and when you consider different uh, when you consider different components x y and z you substitute for i this is one of the equations and the other one is that p dot and you call it, uh, you put the i there is going to be negative partial derivative of the hamiltonian with respect to q the generalized position so let's just uh, make use of these equations for our special case of a one-dimensional system. For our one-dimensional system, the qi dot will be, I mean, I could say, I could do it like this, okay? I could substitute x for i, but let's even write it like this, x dot, okay? qi is the generalized position. For our case, we are interested in the x direction, so I write x instead of qi. This is equal to the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian 
with respect to pi. It is going to be px, right? And, uh, and since px is simply the momentum for our case, we can even omit writing the x here. So, because like, as I said, all of the motion is in one dimension. So the component of the momentum that is in that direction is the moment is momentum itself. I hope that part is clear. Now let's take the partial derivative of this expression with respect to momentum. We just ignore the second term. It, this is a partial derivative. Now for this term, we have p squared over 2m. So 2 will come in front, cancel with this 2, and we will have p over m as the result of the partial derivative. For the second equation, using the second equation, uh, we will have px dot, but as I said, since the momentum is only in one direction, we can say p dot simply is equal to negative partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to x. And if you do that, now this part is ignored. You focus on the second part, which gives you negative kx. Cool. Now, how do we continue from this? We continue in such a manner. We focus on this and this. We see that p is equal to m x dot. If we take the time derivative of both sides, we get that p dot is equal to m x double dot. And we have a formula for p dot. It is right here. It is equal to negative k x. Which is, of course, the same thing as saying mx double dot plus kx equals zero, which, as you can see, is the same equation that we got using Newtonian mechanics. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.